in on uh, two fantastic posts that you had. I don't know if I'm going to be able to post them in the comment section, but if I can, I definitely will so that you all can have some context. So you did such a great job of breaking down some of the, the common four things that you try to tackle in regards to the relationship between gut health and then also, uh, you know, sexual repro re reproductivity or, um, or just libido. And yeah. <clears throat> so, excuse me. The first one that I wanted to tackle that I thought was really great was the role between gut health and estrogen clearance. Can you clear that up for us and like what that means uh, for someone? And also, mind you, for the men that are listening to, the more that we educate ourselves on what's going on on the other side, on the female side, the better that we can all be on the same page. So um, for men who are on right now, they're thinking like estrogen. Do I have estrogen? Again, we want to be thinking about this way in a more holistic way where we can support our uh, our significant others or, or the other women in our lives. So. First and foremost, make sure you you remain open minded. But go ahead. <laughs> well, then, actually, you do have estrogen, and so mm -hmm. <laughs> this yeah. is going to help you too. Yeah. Um, so all good there. But from an estrogen and gut health relationship, right? It's a twofold thing where estrogen is detoxified first through the liver, and then it's attached to bile, and it travels to our intestines um, or our gut to be excreted, right? And so if, um, if, if you're bile, if you're constipated, basically, if you experience IBS or constipation regularly, what can happen is that estrogen can be deconjugated from that bile and reabsorbed back into the body. And so if you are off in your gut health, if you suffer from constipation um, or IBS or you know any sort of issue that you have slow sluggish motility, that is going to put you at risk for um, reabsorption of estrogen and then estrogen dominance, which can then impact, you know, monthly cycles, of course, but also inflammation levels, sex drive, for sure. Um, it plays a role in your metabolism and insulin regulation as well as thyroid function. So motility is definitely important here. And one of the best ways in which you can maintain um, healthy motility is through eating, you know, fiberful vegetables and fruits, um, making sure you're drinking enough water, sleeping and physical activity, like across the board, that's going mm -hmm. to help with motility and estrogen clearance. Um, the other thing that you, there's another coin to or another another side to the coin here in the sense that if you have an imbalance in microbiome meaning your gut bacteria some women are at risk of having you know gut health is like the microbiome is crazy right now it's like this whole wild west field and we're learning mm -hmm. so much about how gut health plays an integral role in every facet of how humans function. So mm -hmm. having a healthy microbiome and a balanced microbiome is going to benefit everybody. But when it comes to hormonal balance and gut uh, microbiome diversity, what we're seeing is that in some women or some populations that suffer from um, hormonal imbalance and even insulin function or, uh, or um, inflammation. This creates pockets of a bacteria called estrobolome. And this estrobolome is a type of bacteria that works specifically to deconjugate um, estrogen in, from that bile. And so if you have a higher amount of this type of bacteria, or if you have hormonal imbalance related to PCOS or or estrogen dominance, um, or even inflammation, this estrobolome, um, you are at more risk of having this estrobolome like bacteria population. Um, and so again, feeding a healthy gut, making sure you're eating pro probiotic foods and prebiotic foods with healthy fiber is going to make a very happy gut for yourself and then also help you manage and regulate um, estrogen balance throughout the rest of your body and and help you excrete any extra extra estrogen along the way 